Right guys, this is going to be a solo flawless pit of heresy dungeon run while not using the ball dupe glitch or any pinnacle weapons. For those that just want to see this, then skip the time on the screen. First of you, I can quickly show you what I was using in the dungeon. So I'll just give you a brief overview now, but talk more about it while I'm actually doing it. Subclass that we chose mainly, obviously we're on a warlock, you can do this on a titan or a hunter, which I have in the past, but as of today this is a warlock video. 80% of the dungeon we're using Voidwalker, that is bottom tree devour with Vortex Grenade and Heal and Rift. When we get to the final boss, we switch to a Well of Radiance um, Dawnblade, which is pretty basic, so we've got a Solar Grenade on and Heal and Rift. As for our armor, we've got the Exotic Helmet and Ezrex Sin on, which states Void Kills increase ability regen, which includes Void Weapon Kills as well as ability kills. As for our mods on our armor, we had Raid Launcher Ammo Finder perks, Enhanced Auto lo Rifle Loader perk, Large Weapon Loader, Hive Barrier, Hive Armaments, Breach Resonator, Large Arm Reserves, Enhanced Sword Scavenger, Heavy Ammo Scavenger, High Energy Fire, Take and Charge, Oppressive Darkness and Concussive Dampener. So I'm just literally rhyming off what all my perks were. It'll make more sense why I've got some of these on. So, when we first start the dungeon on the first encounter, this was our loadout, so we used Long Shadow, as this adds at range. I didn't really need to have this on. It didn't really play any role into it just because of the sword relic and stuff. Which I'll talk about when we're doing it, like I said. We had nine hunger on because it's void and it plays to Nezrex Sin and it's strong. Has a lot of range. It's a very good um art rifle. And it's void. Xenophage, um this is the exotic machine gun. Um uh, so we use that, which will become more obvious while I've got done as well. When we get to the Ogre Maze, we switch off this Long Shadow and we put a shotgun on as everything is close quarters. So it's actually handy having a shotgun on. We keep the same auto, we keep this. Then when we get to Totems, we use the same loadout, still on the same subclass. Then we get to the Wizard section where you've got a, the Jump Maze, basically. The Wizards, we keep on the same loadout. And then when we get to the final boss, like I said, we switch to Well. Then we change our loadout and put a sword on Fallen Guillotine with a boss spec in it. And then we put on the Exotic Grenade Launcher with a HOD, uh, as it's a good combo to have. As far as that, um, other things to note, like things like Breach Resonator. The reason why I had that on is because I have anti-barrier rounds in my auto, so I'm getting more grenade energy on top of how many grenades I'm already getting because of the Voidwalker's uh, subtree. Uh, we had high barrier on and high armaments. These mods can be uh, obtained by menagerie. Um, so basically, you can do either heroic menagerie or normal menagerie, and they, you know, they do. They are rareish. I understand that, but menagerie has been out for quite a while. So for players who've been playing since then or before, then most of them are going to have these mods. If you don't have these mods, you can still do the dungeon without. Um, these rare mods but this video is saying if you haven't got the mods you should be going to get your mods to make the dungeon easier for you this video isn't to show me or my skills or anything it's nothing to do with me it's to, to show that when you get the mods the dungeons a lot easier plus we didn't use the ball dupe glitch and stuff like that we didn't use any pinnacle weapons but I do I mean I'm a solo player and I have these mods so that just it. I didn't get these hive mods from the raid from Crown of Sorrows or what have you. I got it from Menagerie. So anyone can go and get these mods. Just look. For example, today we've got Grenade here on, Arc Singe. Such an easy thing. You can just go in there, there's matchmaking, and you have a chance. If you have three characters, that's nine Menageries a week. Add that up over months and months, and that's a lot of opportunities to get the raid mods. Other than that, there's nothing much else to say. Oppressive Darkness. That debuffs all the enemies, very strong. Take and charge and high energy fire uh, stack with this. That's really good, so when we're picking up orbs, we're getting the 20% uh, buff from high energy fire. Other than that though, uh, on with the run. So first off with this video, um, the, the game audio didn't record correctly on PS4, so that is bad, sorry about that, but... Um, the only audio is going to have is obviously my commentary, so for people who actually want to get a solo flawless on this, and are still struggling with it, uh, it would be better for them anyways, as there's less distractions, just my commentary, just instructions of what to do, where to stand, and all that.
So one console, I don't know about PC. I have no idea. I've never played PC on, on Destiny in my life. But on console, if you summon your sparrow in a certain location in this area that I'm coming up to, and you go to the next checkpoint, you will get the wipe screen come up and you, it will class as a death and it will spawn you in at the start of this encounter. So if you summon a sparrow right here, sometimes you get the wipe screen. If that happens, you must go to orbit. Don't carry on your run. Go to orbit, reset your checkpoint and come back in. The way to avoid it is just don't summon your sparrow at all. Just walk. Just walk. Don't risk it. I know it's only the start of the dungeon, but it's just a pain to sort of go to orbit, reset checkpoint and come back in. So, we'll put a rally in, why not, full ammo and whatnot. And this video will be dedicated more to people who already know the basics of the dungeon, the mechanics, but are struggling with the solo flawless still, you know, still, like, since its release. So, it's more for those people, you know, where to stand, tips, what to do here and there. Um, but anyways, when you take out the major knight, the orange bar, that will open the door to then go inside you can look at your symbols so you get free symbols free random symbols I always like to go to the furthest away symbol it's just something I always do um, but whatever symbols you like to go to first go to those um, the thing with this run certain symbols like if you get line which I did which is in the middle of the map that's what I call it as line not the one I'm going to the one above me there's two augers left and right um, which can kind of uh, ambush you, so you've got to be careful on that symbol. But other than that, most symbols are safe. And the safe way to do it is just proc a devour. You can super the knight, two sword swipes, and that basically opens the door, like I said, triggers the door. And um, we got knight, we got the knight, which is pretty safe. You can just jump over his head, there's not much to it. We've still got a devour going, so we can actually still proc that. And then with the knight, you know, you can use your block and stuff, whatnot. But when you do one super, it takes out quite a lot of damage off it. You don't need to take out all the thrall. If the all the thrall are surrounding you, you can. You can do an R2 attack, it just takes them all out. You can do it like that. Um, but the biggest thing, I guess, with this encounter is just knowing where all the symbols are. There's not that much difficulty to it. It's just what symbols you get. So like I say, I'm I'm going to line now. So there should be an ogre on one side of the bridge and then an ogre on another bridge. But for whatever reason, one ogre uh, wandered over to the other side, which I didn't anticipate to happen as I was wanting to take him out. I could have with Xenophage right now, but once you start pushing up on the bridge, you'll have a knight push you, the sword knights, that you get the relic off. And then you also have like two snipers alongside it with a red bar knight. So I was just deciding at this point what to do. I ended up procking a devourer, why not? And then we can take out some of the adds. What makes Interphage um, really good for this uh, fight. We're looking for that orange bar, so we took out the orange bar to open the door. I'm just um, checking where the ogres are, so there's the ogres behind me, so we're going to use the block mechanic. Just as well we got Shrieker, which it just means you're blocking anyway, so we can block the ogres inside and outside. Sometimes I see people will take the orange bar knight outside, then clear all the adds. Then by the time they come into the shrieker area, there's two ogres right on top of them and staggering them, and it's making them hard to get the block on the shrieker. The, the way to avoid that is just running as quick as you can, get the shrieker with the block, uh, and then you can go from there. And it just it just uh, takes out. The ogres that are inside, always staggering you with the, with the Void Blast. So on this bridge, I wanted to take out this ogre, as we're going to get a fresh sword from a knight. Uh, and if you're on a bridge like this, or any of them, it's always best to sort of take out the ogre, especially if you're an over or something, just an over them. You never really need your super for pretty much anything else, so you may as well. We've got our fresh sword, we'll go for our... Um, for the last symbol, which will will be wizard, we've had hive and trigger already. Uh, the knight and trigger already. Sorry. So generally, what I would have done is I would have had a super with my sword here, but I didn't. Um, so I just went in. 
be sure not to knock your knight off the map which I nearly do nearly did if you do it'll just mean that the knight will respawn somewhere at the top which ideally you don't want to happen as you can see it's safe with devour um, then we're going to go to this pillar here because we've got wizards and then we use interface which can two shot each solar wizard you want to take out the solar wizards before you deal with the main main wizard Overall, the wizard's the most difficult one out of the three. It's not that it's uh, hard, but it's just they're more threatening than the rest of the, than both the Shrieker and the Knight. So you can do a healing rift if you wish. If you have one, I didn't have one, so I didn't use it. But you can definitely sit in a healing rift and just uh, use your R2 attacks to take down the wizard pretty uh, easy. If you are running out of sword ammo as well, and the knight is literally weak. Uh, one super will take off one bar wizard so it, it's better to do that than go and get a fresh sword it, it, getting a fresh sword will just take you you know to take you longer time that'll be the final symbol done and then we can go to the final location there'll be some points during this video where video footage skips it's just something that's happening to me recently probably because my storage is full on my playstation but that's the reason for that. There's no other, like, um, nothing else I'm doing where, you know, you're putting clips together or something like that. It's nothing to do with that at all. Uh, it's just something on PS4. I don't know whether it's just PS4 Pro or no PlayStations, but video footage can skip. It's just something I'll have to put up with till PS5. So now we swap to a shotgun because we're going to go to the Ogre Maze and we're going to do it without ball duping. Which change it changes the encounter a lot. Like I say, I do advise people to ball dupe anyways while it's here, but this video's I'm making this video just in case in the future that if ball dupe and gets um patched, which it will do at some point, then I'll have a video done of me doing it without ball dupe anyways. It just change it up, changes my route up a little bit. This is the route that I take. There's um uh, other routes that you can take. Um, especially if you ball dupe and you do it differently to the way I'm doing it here, but this is this is the way that I thought I would do it when we're actually doing the encounter properly. So we we need three relics, we need to kill three knights and a couple of ads. So um, right in front of us, the door ahead is one of the first knights, but we don't take him first. Um, we're gonna go around to the cliff area. This is sort of our safe zone, and it's a safe way of getting past this ogre right in front of us. We take this passage and then when we get up to here it'll be the first door or the first um entrance if you like right here to get our first night as we do the left door first so there's left middle and right we end up doing left first always it's just a brute and i take now we'll proc a devour always have your devour ready to proc in a room like this as you've got a lot of ads that um push you and stuff you can use your Nova uh, on each night if you wish. But if you do use a uh, nade and stuff, try and build your nade energy back up for when you're going outside. Just in case you mess up with an ogre, you can proc a devour as a safety, as a safe thing, just in case. Guess we'll go for left side now. And then the first door that we saw originally when we dropped down into this ogre maze, we're going to go to that door to get our second orb. I always wait as well for the ogre to come. Um, and then bait out a stomp. He'll do a stomp. Generally you take damage off that. I don't know why I didn't. But the damage you take isn't so bad. It's better that he stomps rather than beam you down. If he beams you down like directly, uh, you can get wrecked. So just be careful of that. Okay, so we'll go for our second knight. Um, it's random. It's a bit of RNG where the knight can be. The knight was right here for me, which was handy. A proxy devour, just in case, because Thrall can spawn behind you as well. Build some nade energy back, so we got devour back, as in our grenade back. And then we're going to go under this cliff again. This is the secret passage. I always take it. It's really nice. It's a really nice way to get from left side to middle. Safely. 
In this room here, you'll have a lot of thrall spawning. Just be careful not to get stuck with them in that um, cave there, which can happen. Just got to be careful of that. Then we can get our middle dunk. Plus, if you're doing the ball dupe strat, you just do a ball dupe right there, come to this door, and then skip all these ads. But obviously, we're not doing that. We'll now proc another, another devour, take any ads out that we can see. And then we're looking for the knight. As this is our last dunk, so. We get our orb, and then we get the final dunk. The loadout that we've got on is what we're going to be doing for totems, and this is the most difficult encounter in the dungeon if you are not, do, uh, if you are not doing ball duping. So, if you don't know what that means, basically when you dupe a ball, when you get a ball, you dupe it and you get another one. And you can dupe six balls. This encounter requires six balls, I believe, to dunk in the middle where you see the relic um, in the middle to the right. In order to get the relic, you need to kill the yellow bar ultras, the knights, uh, while staying on the plate. So this mechanic is from King's Fall, from a Destiny 1 raid. For the D2 players who never played D1, it's basically um, totems from King's Fall. Uh, and basically, you've got to keep this plate active for so long. The plate will make audio cues and visual cues to tell you that the plate is going to... Um, wipe you if you don't get back on the plate you can st spend a lot of time off the plate people will be surprised but you want to be aware of going back to the plate here and there you don't have to just sit on the plate the whole time you can because we're on devour you know we can we can do that but this is why we've got xenophage on for this encounter because it's just so easy to take out the two knights the boom knights if you're not taking those boom knights out that's where you have the problems with this encounter because you'll have a bunch of ads spawning, curse for all, all that and the nades, that's the biggest thing, the acolytes with the nades, when they're in cover they just spam nades at you so if you've got that with boomer knights that's bad, that's why the boomer knights are a priority now yeah you can put a sniper on but you, the amount of flinch in this room it just isn't worth it that's why I'd rather have a shotgun on a quick ag clear uh, the art rifle's really good for range. I can sit on the plate, take acolytes from there, no problem. Xenophage for the knights, for the red bar knights, the boomer knights, and then for these knights, the ultra knights as well. Plus we've got a nova bomb every now and then. Um, for basically a free orb. So it's a good load it's the best loadout for this if you're not ball duping. So always be like I say Thinking about this plate all the time, even before you do a dunk and stuff, when you've got an orb. That's the last thing you want to wipe you. The knights take a second or two to spawn in, so I, I don't just stand there aiming down sights, waiting for the knights. You know, keep your devour chain going. Uh, you take two or three seconds before they spawn in. Always keep your interface reloaded as well after each phase and keep try and keep an eye on how many dunks you've done as well. I often forget whether I'm on like the fourth or fifth dunk or whatever, but just keep um a mental note of how many dunks you've done. Like I say, I think it's six, I believe. Doing a bit of ad clear. Uh, as you don't want the ads to get on top of you, that's the biggest thing. You don't want to be just going around just clearing the ultras. You want to be clear and ads as well. Very important. Plus you're filling up uh, back up on ammo all the time while you're doing it. We're doing a Nova here. I was hoping the knight would be sitting in that Nova better, which he wasn't. Uh, I went back to middle just to make sure the plate doesn't wipe me. While keeping Devour active. It's literally the same. You don't need to change much. Um, only time is like if Curse for all are pushing you and you don't have Devour or something, you might need to like jump over them or away from them. Um, but you never want to be run out of Devour so much. As in, you run out of Devour and you haven't got a grenade or a melee to reproc it. That's what I mean by that. Of course, you can utilize Healing Rifts as well. 
Uh, if I had Hive Invigoration on, I mean, that wouldn't really help so much. I guess it would only proc off the major, uh, the yellow bars, but something else you can have on. The biggest thing is obviously a high barrier, I would say. Just for the damage resistance. But like I say, you can do it without those mods. But as I said at the start of the video, something the pit players should be going for these uh, mods anyways. I think Bungie doesn't want us playing with them anyway. They're, they're wanting to sunset those uh, raid mods for sure. And I'm all for it. I would rather they weren't in the game. That's just me, but... Um, because it, it was an initial concept from D1, basically. D1, Wrath of the Machine, um, there was also Ruin Wings for the Titan, but Wrath of the Machine had uh, raid armor that give you heavy ammo in the raid, but it worked outside the raid as well, on Fallen. Um, so it wasn't a big problem. But the thing is, the ammo economy in Destiny 1 was way better than it is now. Ammo's... You've got to have finders on and all sorts to make ammo consistent if you haven't got armaments on so it, it, it's just one of those things so I, like I say I wish they'd just sunset the uh, armaments this fall and just said right no raid armors going forward armaments you can't use them only on the old on the, only on the old armor which I believe they'll do at some point probably just because they know how powerful it is so we're on the last couple of phases. I'm not sure what dunk we're on, but we are quite weak here. I'm just backing up from these cast just to make sure we don't wipe at this late stage. Putting some damage into that major on the right. We'll go back to the plate. It's all about um, management of ads and ammo. That's the biggest thing with it. And just keeping an eye on your timer, on your devour. So obviously you're going to lose it. When you're doing dunks, you may lose it. Like right now, I'm close to losing it. Um, like I say, every time you do a dunk though, you get cursed. So you can melee them like so, which I, I was aware of. So you don't always need to proc devour via your grenade. Other good exotics would be, or other good loadouts would be 21% delirium in this room and you could put on a kinetic sniper or an energy sniper to deal with the knights above that'd be a good way of doing it or any other machine gun like hammerhead that's pretty good in this room I don't think you need a machine gun for ad clear because of how good 9 hunger is that can do your ad clear just fine and a shotgun as well so I feel as though that's better that way you don't get flinched with xenophage you know it's just a 2 shot to the knights above just makes it easier it's just with the PV flinch for snipers. It, it's just a little bit weird compared to day one. So we get our orb. I think this might be our final orb. I'm not 100%. Yep, it is. Now make sure that you do like a healing rift or something if you're weak when you've done your final um, dunk, as the ads can kill you. Still, they're up for a couple of seconds, as you saw. That's the totems there. And on with the jump and maze now for the wizards. So, for this part, you want to stick to the same loadout. Xenophage, 9 hunger, shotgun, whatever really. You don't, the shotgun doesn't do play any role in this. Mainly your heavy and your um, R rifle. With this part, it's very easy to wipe. Just t don't do it in one um, jump. Like right down below, unless you know exactly what you're doing. If you don't know exactly what you're doing, just do it. Take it at one part at a time, because those um, rollers can basically wipe you straight away. Okay, so I never looked at the symbols. Um, if you don't know this room, it doesn't matter. You don't need to. Um, if you go right side every time, like the route that I take, so I go right side. If there's a wizard to be killed right side, I'll do it, which there is. I've got a streaker here, so that means that there's a wizard at this part. So if there wasn't a wizard here, that's fine. Right side's taken out of it, so I know there's no wizards right. Then I would work, work my way to middle, which is like 10, 20 seconds off, not even that long. So then I would know there's probably two wizards middle and one on the other side, or two on the other side. It, it just takes it out. 
So I don't need to bother myself with learning symbols for this room, nothing. So, I mean, more often than not, there is a wizard right side, but if there isn't, it just means it's more middle. Uh, so this is the way I go for middle. Jump over to here. And you'll know if there's a wizard that side, if there's acolyte snipers hanging around. So if there's one hanging around here, it means there's a wizard to my right behind that wall. That's how it, that's how the game indicates to you, you know, where the wizards are, basically. Sometimes the wizards, if you take the shield off, they will just fall as well. Or sometimes they'll go to cover, sometimes you'll just spray them down. They, they do different things. So right now I was guessing, I didn't know uh, what the symbols was, um, but I, the two possibilities could have been, it was either over the side I'm going to now, or right in the middle where all the rollers are. Okay, so I went this side because even if it is like actually middle where all the rollers are, um, there's a route I take from this area to get there quickly anyways. But um, there was a wizard inside anyways, so if there is a wizard on this location, a good spot is to stand here. Proc a devour, and the wizard's right there. You don't need to go right round. So if you go right round, there's knights with uh, swords and all sorts. But you don't have to deal with any of that. Okay, so that's the final wizard killed. So now we can get on to the final boss. We will be switching our loadout, like I said at the start of the video. Um, Main thing with the jump puzzle is just be careful with your jumps. Don't make any mistakes. Don't make any risks. Because if you got this far, this isn't. This is not the part where you want to be wiping. So 100%. Obviously, we'll switch our subclass and gear and stuff when we get to the rail, uh, rally banner. And then we can explain the boss fight. Now, you can one phase this boss um, with a sword. It can be done on Well Radiance. I nearly did myself. And I didn't really optimize my gear. I could have put on all the sword mods. I could have done all that stuff. But um, I'm doing the fight that you would two phase it. Um, as if you're relying to one phase the boss. Like, if you're relying on that to get your solo flawless, it means that you're not competent enough with the dungeon to do it anyways, solo flawless. It means you're relying on a bit of luck. It's like, oh, will I one phase, will I not? That's not what it's about. You need to learn to do the dungeon, like the, like this boss fight, and you, you, should be able, you should be comfortable to go two or three phases, and it shouldn't be a problem to you. Okay? I get people why they want to one phase it, because it's quicker, but on a sword flawless, most people aren't bothered about if it's going to take the difference between 40 minutes or 35 minutes. Nobody's bothered about that. No one cares about that. What they care about is they want to get the emblem, they want to get the achievement for it, and all that stuff. So for most people, he ain't going to one-phase his boss on a well arranged with a sword. It's pretty tight. The damage is tight. Even with Fallen Guillotine, even with Fallen Guillotine, it's pretty tight. And you would need, the, you need to get all the builds sorted for it. Like supercharge and Lucian Blade and all that. So this is going to be based on me two phase it. Just, just, you know. The more you do this boss fight, obviously the better you're going to get at it. And the better um, you're going to know where all the odds, best way to take them. So we got our first sword. We went for the knight first. We usually go for the shrieker first, but I just ended up going for the knight. We're going to do end up using two swords for, all, for the knight, shrieker, and... And wizard you can sort them all with one if you play it slow and use your super like wait for supers and use that and um, but you don't really need to I mean you can take out the knight and the shrieker in one sword easily then take out another yellow bar knight to get an additional sword which is like I say uh, there's no urgency with it um, but that's what, that's what I would do anyways. Just It just means that you can use the sword for ag clear as well in the middle, which will have the acolytes and stuff. But I've took out most of them when, when I used the wither horde at the start. And then we'll go for the wizard. Like, 
from the start of the dungeon the wizard's the most threatening you can utilize healing rifts stuff like that because you're not going to be using the healing rift so much elsewhere i mean you might use it on the boss if you screw up your well or if your well's about to run out and you want to do extra damage but generally you're not gonna use a healing rift for the wizard and what i usually do is just jump swipe jump swipe And generally the wizard will just stand there and, and not know what to do, to be honest. And then we'll just take out the remaining ads. Now I didn't take any ads out on the Shrieker side. The reason for that is um that they don't they don't impact anything. You can actually use them if you want to get say high energy fire and you need an orb. And all the ads are killed and the orbs disappeared. You can use those additional ads to get any buffs that you need. Um, so they're there as a backup if you want any orbs and stuff like that. But you don't need to take them. They don't push. They just stand there. Even when you're DPSing the boss. And especially the fact that we're on a well. that You don't need to touch them at all. Okay, so each dunk that you get. You're going to get Thrall that spawn in. You can easily avoid them. But you want to get... I don't even touch the thrall, I do two dunks, and I always do a dunk on the side where I haven't took ads out, just in case that they hit you in the back. Um, and I leave either this side up or the opposite side as the final dunk. Now, the problem here is, I was using high energy fire with taking charge, but you get a 20% buff, but well, the radiance is a buff as well. So they don't stack. So it won't the, the high energy fire doesn't really benefit you on a warlock unless you went on voidwalker as oppressive darkness is a debuff and high energy fire is a buff so they would stack together so that would be a good way of doing it the only reason why i'm doing this class is because swords are popular with this boss and everyone loves doing well on this boss so that's i just went to i'm just giving people what they want really basically um ideally i would have liked to go voidwalker with a hard with a grenade launcher, a power grenade launcher, and then use utilize the charge of light with oppressive darkness and a nova bomb, and you could two phase the boss that way pretty safely as well. Um, but this is also a good way. It can be risky a little bit, uh, but when you get your dunk, you want to do a um, with a hard shot and a nade. You can do two or three if you want before he slams, and then you can start sorting. You want to do your heavy attacks. Anytime you have a heavy attack available, if you don't have the charge up, don't do it. My particular sword has Swordmaster's Guard on it, so I get my um, heavy attack up pretty frequent. Just be careful of when the Cursed come in. I, it, I did get weakish there, even though I was in a well. Just got to be careful of that. And then we're just doing additional damage. If we have to back up like that, we can always use Weaver Horde like I did. <clears throat> to get the extra bit of damage. Like I said, I could have pushed for the one phase, but like I said, the purpose of this video is just to show you if you, for whatever reason you don't get the one phase, um, then you'll need to go an extra phase and you should be comfortable with that. If if you're not, then you're somebody that's relying on RNG to sort of get your solo flawless. On a Titan, however, it's different. Like if I was making the video on a Titan, the one phase is pretty easy. Weapons of Light is a uh, higher buff than well. Um, it would just be an easier, an easier sort of run for the one phase on this. There is the Fell Winter's Helm as well that you can use, which does give a debuff to the boss. So there's a strat you can do with that, and that will um, stack with the well. So that's a strat that uh, can be done as well, but uh, I'm not opting to do that either. Even though we've got uh, Nesrix in on, it still works with um, with Well of Radiance, just because it says Void kills increase ability regen. It doesn't mean you've got to be on a Void subclass. Okay. And there's no benefit to putting Phoenix Protocol on either. Another exotic you could have chose was the um, Sun Braces, so you just get a better nade. I mean that would have been a good player. Well, 
It's not really needed. Most of your damage comes from the sword uh, for this. Okay, so we took out the wizard first. We'll take out the shrieker. Uh, and then we'll go for our next fresh sword. Just like before. We're rushing it a little bit more now as... Um, Boss is really weak, so there's not a lot of danger. Even if we uh, do our final dunk and there's a load of adds up, not so bad. If you are weak, is when you're taking the knight, especially when you're in mid hooks, uh, obviously you're not blocking like you do on the shrieker so much, like the whole time. The boss can actually hit you from inside, so if you are one shot but you're confident you're going to survive, just be careful that the boss he actually can hit you from inside in in the middle area okay so we'll get the first charge now we'll do the uh, dunks never dunk uh, an orb where the boss is at because he can stomp you and then knock you off the map so that's something you never want to do a way to avoid that is if you go to pick up an orb the opposite side that needs dunked if you do that you'll never have the boss on top of you you'll always be you'll always be on the side that you want him to be if that makes sense rather than getting an orb like if i got an orb on the right side behind me the knight would push up to that dunk to sort of stop me from getting the dunk so if i dunked it then he would just stomp but like i said the way to avoid is just go the opposite side We done a nade there, I noticed my sword ammo was lowish. It would have been okay with 27, but I just wanted to get a little bit more ammo just in case. So now we're just rounding up the uh, frawl. And we've a hard like so. And then we'll get the dunk, same as before. Do a weaver hard shot first, and then a will of radiance. The well is done when he he does his um, AI move. When he does that move, you're free to well him. He won't stomp. He won't stomp until after that. That's why we do the well as soon as possible. And you can just sort him to death. So that was a solo flawless uh, pit of heresy uh, while not using any ball dupes or any pinnacle weapons. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.